Hello friends. Welcome to Programming Concepts. My name is Amit and today we will talk about Dependency Inversion Principle. This is continuation to part 5, Interface Segregation Principle. So please watch it before proceeding to this one. I shared the link in the description. Alright, so let's begin with the most boring part of this video and which is the definition itself. So, according to DIP, high-level modules or classes should not depend on low-level modules or classes, but both should depend upon abstraction. Also, abstraction should not depend upon details, but details should depend upon abstractions. This definition may not make any sense at the moment and terms like high-level module, low-level modules, abstraction, details are confusing at the moment. So if it doesn't make any sense and you are aware of all these terms and still not able to relate with the definition, don't worry, just stick with us and we will tear each and every thread of it. To understand it better, let's try to create a small program. And the requirement is like, fetch employee details by ID. Which means, if we provide employee ID, our application should return all details of that employee. Simple, extremely simple. So the first class which we required is employee. And this class will be responsible for holding employee data. Next class will be employee business logic layer. And this class will act as an intermediator between end user and the class who is actually going to retrieve data for us. Next class will be employee data access. And this class is responsible for fetching actual data from any data repository. It could be anything like SQL, MySQL, Hadoop, SharePoint, anything. Last class will be data access factory. And this will be responsible for returning object of employee data access class. For example, instead of writing simply class1 obj is equal to new class1, what we will do here is, we will write class1 obj is equal to data access factory dot get employee data access object which is nothing but a static method. Let's create those classes in Visual Studio. So the first class will be employee. So public class employee open bracket. Let's put some dummy properties like id of type integer name and department of type string, salary of type integer. See, our first class is ready. Next class will be employee data access. And this class will fetch actual employee details from target repository. So let's create this class. Public class employee data access. And this class will have one public method, get employee details with id as an input parameter. For simplicity, we are returning a dummy object here. So employee AMP is equal to new employee. Let's say ID is equal to ID, name is equal to Amit, department is equal to engineering, and salary is equal to 10,000. Let's return that object. We are done with our second class, and the next class will be data access factory. Let's create this class public class data access factory and this class will have one static method which will be responsible for returning object of that class which is responsible for fetching actual data from target repository and you know that in our case that class is employee data access class let's create that function so public static employee data access and let's say the method name will be get employee data access obj and that will return new employee data access simple our third class is also ready let's move to our final class our final class is employee business logic layer so public class employee business logic layer let's create a variable of type employee data access so I just named it underscore employee data access. Let's create a constructor, employee business logic layer. And this constructor will assign the object 
of employee data access to our local variable underscore employee data access with the help of data access factory class. Let's create another method get employee details with ID as input parameter. And this will return employee details with the help of employee data access class. See, we are done with our classes and this code will fulfill all our project requirement. Let's get back to the confusing terms which we described in the definition. In this sample project, could you guess what is the high level class or module is? And if your guess is employ business logically a class, then you are correct. And the reason is, as per dependency inversion principle, high level class or module is something which is dependent on other low level class or module. And here, employ business logically a class is dependent on data access factory and employ data access class both. Anything break in those classes will impact employee business logic layer class. All right, next is low level class or module is. So if you see this code, employee data access class is the low level class here, as it is not dependent on other classes. Clear? Next is details. So get employee details method of employee data access class. The details where we are fetching actual details of employee act as a detail here. And if you see our employee business logic layer class, this class is already aware of employee data access class and its method get employee detail at, you know, live environment, there might be thousands of methods and it is not advisable that our high level class should be aware of all low level class methods and details. All right. So if I recap the definition, high level class or module should not depend upon low level classes or module. Here in a project high level classes employ business logic layer class as it is directly dependent on our low level class which is employ data access class. All right. Another very important condition is both should depend upon abstraction. And also abstractions should not depend upon details, but details should depend upon abstraction. This thing we will cover in just a bit. So till now we are clear three out of four confusing terms, high level module, low level modules and details. And I hope now you are able to relate the definition slightly better. In that note, let's cover the remaining part of the definition. But before that, let's understand what abstraction is. So abstraction allows making relevant information visible, only relevant information visible. In simple word, we can say that Abstraction means something which is non-concrete. Non-concrete means which doesn't have physical existence. So abstraction in programming means we need to create either an interface or an abstract class which is non-concrete so that we cannot create an instance of it. In our example, employee business logic and employee data access are the concrete classes. That means we can create objects of it. That means they have physical existence, at least in programming world. But if we create an interface or an abstract class, we cannot create instance of it. They don't have physical existence. They are non-concrete. All right. So as per definition, dependency inversion principle, the employee business logic class should not depend on the concrete employee data access class, but both should depend on abstraction. Meaning, both should depend on either an interface or an abstract class. So if you recap our code, the employee business logic layer class is directly dependent on employee data access class. At compile time, this class is already aware which class it is going to call. And this is against the definition of dependency inversion principle. Let's refactor our code to add her dependency inversion principle. The first class will be employee and there is no change in this class as it is only holding the employee data. Next, we need to implement abstraction. And as we discussed before, abstraction is something which is non-concrete, which doesn't have physical existence. And to make it simple, in programming world, it is an interface or the abstract class. All right, so let's create an interface then. Public interface I employee data access. 
and this interface have one method with get employee details where id as an input parameter and employee object as an output so our interface is ready and so is the abstraction now it's time to implement that abstraction in the dependent classes and the first dependent class is employee data access so let's create that class public class employee data access let's inherit from i employee data access interface now if you see my this class is forced to implement get employee details method all right so other things are similar like we were doing it before public employee get employee details and we were populating some dummy data like we were doing it before and let's return that employee object all right so if you see that the details the methods which are responsible for fetching actual data the methods which are responsible for implementing some kind of functionality is dependent on the interface now we are forced to implement get employee details all right so now our details is dependent on abstraction let's refactor our next class which is data access factory so public class data access factory and this class have one method get employee data access object so previously we were returning directly the object of that class employee data access now we change the return type to i employee data access and similar return new employee data access that's it so our data access factory class is ready next our last class which we need to modify is employee business logic layer all right so let's see what are the changes we need to do in that class so i employee data access so instead of creating object of employee data access we are creating object of i employee data access so our class is not aware at the compile time which class actually it is going to call at run time so similarly public employee business logic layer constructor assign that employee data access variable with the help of data access factory class get employee data access obj next create the get employee details method so it's returning employee object obviously and it will return with the help of employee data access dot get employee details id that's it so our code which adhere the dependency inversion principle is ready so if you recap the definition both classes high level module or low level module employee business logic layer and employee data access class should depend on abstraction and here both are dependent on i employee data access which is nothing but the abstraction another condition was details are dependent on abstraction and not the vice versa so if you see as we implemented the abstraction my class is forced to implement those method so my details are dependent on abstraction all right so we have successfully implemented dependency inversion principle so that's it from this tutorial if you have any query you can ask me in comment thanks for watching